Everybody, how's it going? Lord Josh here once again. Quite an interesting subject for this video. Bit of a magical experiment, if you will. Now, for the record, I have done this experiment before, repeatedly, and I've always usually gotten the same results, more or less. And I'm doing this more than anything to prove to myself that this energy that I'm working with, I'm not creating it. It's not coming from me. I'm not manifesting it into existence. It already exists with or without my participation. And I want to prove that to myself, and I think over the years I've more or less done it. Now, I will agree that I think it is kind of 50-50 that if there's something out there for you to interact with, when you do communicate with it, you give it power, you give it legitimacy, but there has to be something there to start with. And that was always the criticism I got on my symbolism series when talking about Lamat, four directional hieroglyphs, and seeing the Lamat star in every walk of life. People always say, well, Lord Josh, you are consciously looking for these things. You're searching for them. Therefore, you are finding them because you're manifesting the opportunity to find them. Uh, I would always disagree with that. The symbols that I've decoded up until this point, for example, the Oranguru from Pokemon, the Lexus symbol, the Admiral Insurance logo, when I made my video on the Pope, when I did my video on the Freemasonic symbols, exposing them as sextants and not as compasses, I always get the same kind of comments. It's because you've tuned your mind to search for these things. And so... For a while, I wanted to see if that had any truth to it whatsoever. So I would conduct these experiments where for two, three, maybe four weeks sometimes, if I saw a four-directional symbol, instead of recording it as I usually would in a notebook, I would simply disregard it. I'd say, okay, I've seen the number four on a license plate. I'll just forget about that and get on with my day. Same thing if I saw something on a billboard. I wouldn't even register it. I would just simply pass over it, and I wouldn't give it a second thought. And I did this. The longest I've, I've done this is about four weeks, I think. And I've noticed that the more I attempt to drown these symbols out, the further I step away, it seems that I'm being pulled in even stronger. Usually when I take a break from all of the Lamat symbols, they don't take a break from me. And I think that it shows that there is something out there that we're attracted to each other. There is some type of energy that is compatible with my energy, and we are vibing, more or less, on some type of level. And I don't think there's any way to truly break away from that vibe. So even if I wanted to, let's just say hypothetically, I'm not thinking about this, I'm just putting this out there. If I said, I want to walk away from all of this today, I want to put the symbols behind me, I want to put Lamat behind me, and I want to forget about the whole thing, I don't even think it's possible to do that at this stage, because I'm so embedded into the very fabric of what Lamat is. He has become me, I have become him. And I don't think there's any way we can separate at this point, nor would there be a reason why I'd want to separate from him. I, I love being a part of that energy, that vibe. But I've done the experiments, and I keep doing them a couple of times a year. I'll try and do them, and I get the same results. Lamat is ever-present. He isn't going anywhere. Whether I log the syncs, whether I record them, it makes absolutely no difference. In fact, it seems to make it a little bit stronger. I'm not sure why, but it seems like when I stop paying uh, complete conscious attention that things come in a little easier, more of a free flow of thought, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't question it anymore. I just get on with my experiment and after a few weeks, I come back to how things were, and I notice a surge of activity involving Lamat and how he pops up. That's how I did the video on the Knights of Malta. I took a break, and whilst I was taking a break, 
I got all these thoughts in my mind about the anagram of the word Malta, which is Lamat. And I didn't think about that when I was staring at the four-sided cross. Sometimes taking a step back will actually allow you to be able to get a better understanding of the symbol that you're deciphering. And for me personally, I couldn't recommend it enough. So if you're a practitioner, you're deep into magic, and you notice that you haven't taken a break in a long time, my advice would be to do just that. Take a break for a couple of weeks and notice how things like your results will all of a sudden start to manifest very, very quickly. Not exactly sure why. Again, I don't question it. I find it rather beautiful. But whether I pay attention, participate, attempt to involve myself in the world of Lamat, it doesn't seem to make much difference. Lamat is there regardless of my existence. He was there long before. He'll be there long after I'm gone. And I think that is the, the thought here that, that people need to remember when they're watching my videos. I only give you information that I know directly from Lamat. But you can get it yourself. You don't need me to give it to you. I would much rather give you the tools to reach contact with this force than having to keep coming to me and asking me questions because my knowledge has limitations, whereas Lamat's, I believe, doesn't. I think he is ever-knowing, ever-present, and all-becoming. The best times, the most rewarding experiences I've had when deciphering symbols have not come from me sitting at a book for hours on end or staring at a computer monitor for hours trying to figure out what's hidden within the pictures. The greatest experiences are those when you're doing something mundane in your life like making cereal or doing some gardening and all of a sudden you get that flash that flash of imagination in your mind where all the puzzle pieces seem to come together so naturally, whereas before you couldn't make them come together and you were trying so hard to do it. And I think with my experimentation, and I do encourage people to experiment with spiritual theories and concepts and ideas to see if they hold water. And I say this to everybody, if you believe that Lamat is not a real force, why don't you try reaching out to him and finding out the ultimate answer? And I can say confidently, 110%, that you will get some kind of response and reaction. You will feel something. Now, what that exactly is, I don't know because I don't know your life story, but there is a legitimate force there that exists way outside of our minds and our subconscious minds, and it's there to be interacted with. I've also done similar experiments with medications that I've been taking throughout the years to see if they would have any impact or any weakening effect on Lamat's presence in my life. And I can say, honestly, I've been on some very high dosage medication, mind-altering drugs. They haven't really impacted Lamat at all. He's always prevailed. There are times when he takes a back seat, but he's still around and I can still feel him and I can still see the symbols and the sinks. So he's never truly gone away since he first appeared in my life in 2007 when I was 11 years old. He's always been around. There are times when he's, he's drifted away a little bit, but he's always been there in some capacity. So now I've done an experiment to challenge my beliefs. I'd like you to try one as well. Now it's entirely up to you. You might not even be interested in doing it. But if you're one of the people out there that wants to know, is Lamat a real force? Is he beneficial for my uh, magical practice? Maybe you might want to think about communicating with him. If you do, please watch my video on how to contact Lamat. All the information you could ever want is there. And my good friend, Bless Parko, has included a clip in that video as well, giving her thoughts and opinions and experiences with Lamat. There are so many people coming out of the woodwork, coming to me and they're saying, I've been talking to Lamat for 30 years and I've just stumbled across your channel and your experiences totally match mine. I've only been around for like, what, 11 years doing this? It's not long at all compared to some people. I've got a lady named Maureen Dales, who is 64 or 63, 
and she's been interested in Mayan mythology for years, and she has heard the voice of Lamat and has heard the word Lamat since she was 13 years old. And she found my video, Who or What is Lamat? And she said that everything that I said in that video totally resonated with her experiences in life, despite not having a clue who I am prior to that point. So I would really love it if you would try an experiment to see what you think of Lamat and the energy itself and get back to me and be honest about your results. I can't tell you how many times people have got an egg on their face when they've said to me, oh, Lamat doesn't exist, he's just a game character, or he's just an old hieroglyph, or he's another word for star or seed. And then weeks go by, sometimes years, and I'll get a pop-up on Facebook, and they come to me and they say, I've just had a full-on contact communication with Lamat. I've heard his voice, I've seen him in my dreams, I keep seeing the number four and the Lamat star, and I say, well, there it is. You weren't ready to accept it in the beginning, but that's what Lamat is. He's new beginnings. So thank you for watching, everybody. Take care. I'll see you soon.